What's up my friends, welcome back, you're watching Hard Video Order Stuff, and today for you, I'm going to show you the best ways to make Final Cut run faster. Whether you're using Final Cut on an older Mac, or if you're editing high resolution footage, or both, it's my goal to get your projects running smoothly, quickly, and definitely with no beach balling. These are things that some of you will be doing already, but I know there'll be a few tips that you won't be doing, and I know they'll be helpful. Plus, if you apply all of the effects together, I guarantee it will speed up Final Cut for you. Anyway, this is going to be a quick one, let's dive straight in. Tip one is to hide the audio track that you can see under your clips. Now obviously, if you need to see the audio, then don't do this, but Final Cut allocates a surprisingly large amount of processing power to this, and hiding them can speed things up. You really notice this when you scroll through your timeline or zoom in. Every time you do this, Final Cut has to re-analyse the audio and visually map it out under your clips. When you think of it like that, it's no surprise it slows things down. The same goes for the layout of your workspace in Final Cut. The more simple you can make your layout, the faster things will run. Tip two is to download an app for your Mac called Max Fan Control. The basic version is totally free and it's brilliant. What it does is give you control of your Mac's internal fans. When your Mac is working hard and the temperature of your CPUs gets too high, it starts to throttle processing power. There are two modes, automatic, which you want to keep it on most of the time, but if you know you're gonna be doing some full on editing, I'd switch it on over to full blast so long as you can stand the noise. That way it'll keep your CPUs cooler for longer and hopefully it won't throttle your performance. My advice is don't get the paid pro version of Max Fan Control. The free version works just fine for what we're doing here. Tip three is to change the background rendering settings to suit you. Bear in mind, background rendering takes up storage space and processing power when it's taking place, but a rendered clip should run flawlessly. I'd say if things are running fine without it, you can just leave it off and save yourself the storage space. Or you can do it the way that I do it and leave it on, but set it so that it starts background rendering after a few minutes of inactivity. That way, if you take a break from your editing to go and recaffeinate, Final Cut will get to work. Remember, when you finish a project, it's good practice to delete the old render files. Tip four is to switch to performance mode. I know it's tempting to leave it on quality mode so that you can admire your lovely footage, but performance mode makes a big difference to the playback of your clips. Your image reverts to high quality as soon as you hit pause so you don't have to keep changing back and forth to see it in full quality. Tip five is to transcode your clips or make proxies. Transcoding converts your clips to a codec that's easier for Final Cut to deal with, and proxies create much lower quality versions of your clips. Both of these options speed things up massively. The process is easy, simply select your clips, head up to the menu, select either transcode or proxy media, and wait. And wait, you will have to, because it can be a lengthy process. Don't worry, it won't affect the quality of your final render. Most of the video that I shoot is 10-bit 4K, and personally, I prefer transcoding. However, if you're doing lots of, say, multicam editing, you may want to consider using proxies. Tip number six is about the way that you add your effects to your clips. I'd advise adding any kind of lookup tables or exposure adjustments, effects, anything like that, at the end of the edit if you can. These things all sap processing power and slow things down. Personally, what I prefer to do is apply an adjustment layer across my footage. This has all of my color grading and other effects, and then I switch it on and off depending on what I'm doing. Adjustment layers aren't a stock plugin with Final Cut, but don't worry, you can get them for free. Just search for adjustment layer on Google and you'll find it. It's a game changer. Tip number seven, my final tip, is to use an SSD as your working drive for Final Cut editing. As we all know, SSDs are so much faster than standard hard drives to work with. They have two problems, obviously. Firstly, the capacity of them tends to be fairly small, and also the price is not great but man, they're fast. I left this tip to last because I don't love recommending that you spend money, but man, SSDs are great and they make a really big difference to your editing speed. Anyway, that's it for now. You can ask me questions about anything that I've mentioned in this video. I just hope you found it interesting and helpful. I've got a large archive of videos about videography on this channel of which YouTube has handpicked this video for you and the one underneath is my most recent upload. Until next time, let's help each other out and shoot better video. See you guys. The chains you bring me